What's up? This is Devs from Devil Driver. You're with the Metal Alliance Tour in New York City. Put your horns up. We're back, Serge so the Grammar City. We are the Metal Alliance number two. I'm here with Des Fafada from Double Driver. Welcome back to New York, brother. Hey, man. Thanks. I love this town. Good time already. It's going to be a better time tonight. You know? Sold out show. Sold out show. Metal Alliance. A lot of killer bands, man. So, you yeah, know. Let's get into I mean, obviously, since you mentioned it, what do you think is setting apart this tour package from, you know, other tour packages that are coming this year? Tons of heavy bands. Everyone's doing their own thing. Uh, the ticket price isn't outrageous. Everybody's got adequate stage time. Uh, and Devil Driver's headlining. <laughs> so. And as before I forget, somebody asked me or put a comment on the last interview we did at the Blue Room back at uh, the Best Buy Theater last year. They wanted to know what brand of sunglasses you wear. They, they really asked me that. For real? Yeah, for real. These aren't these. I just took these right now from my sound guy. I don't know. I don't know what I was wearing. I have no idea. I'm a fan of like 12 bucks. $12 and, and less is good for me. I don't know what they were. I bought them at the mall with my kids. <laughs> hey, with all seriousness, how's Bubble doing? He just left the hospital today, which is which is killer, man. Um, you know, he was in there for, for uh, pneumonia and uh, a whole myriad of other things that started happening because of it. And uh, it was touch and go for a while, actually. So we were really worried, man. It's, it's good that he's out. Now he's got to go home and really, really rest. He's just been running solid, real strong solid. And so in, inevitably, it's going to take someone out. But that dude is the most fit, you know, he's straight edge, fit guy. So to see it happen to him, we all kind of... I think take a look at, at the way we run and be like, okay, we're going to make sure and get sleep and try to stay healthy. But what he caught was probably airborne. He was on the same planes that I was in Australia. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, anybody could have sat next to or, or whatever, you know, how he got it. But he's, he's uh, left the hospital today, so. And hey, man, I got to commend you because it's, I mean, you keep getting hit with these really, really hard situations and you've always handled them so well. You know, you never even think about canceling the tour you just kind of keep going you know and i think that's awesome because you're obviously a role model to all the heavy metal bands and artists out there and it's kind of cool that you kind of say you know what show wants to go on yeah it's a shame to leave with a man down like that um but it, it is what it is he was in the hospital we had it planned and we had to go out uh, we're lucky we had chris towning who also played in barrier dead right. it was our guitar tech so he knows the tunes uh, and he spent two days on the bus on the way out to Texas, the very first shows for this, and learned. And he's doing a killer job on stage. And so we just happen to be getting saved like that. Someone's watching out for us, you know, for sure. And, you know, and the fans have been behind it, too. You know, they know we're out there to work, but that we're also missing, you know, our friends and our comrades that are left behind. But it is what it is. got to go out and work. Yeah. Hey, Des, I heard recently that you're label shopping. So I wanted to ask you what prompted that decision. Uh, a lot of things, I think if you'll talk to them or talk to us. But I think that the main thing is, yeah, we're, we're label shopping. So tonight's New York City, there's, you know, at least 10 labels are here right now. I just talked to a bunch of them. And it's good to see that coming out for us. I think it's, it shows what we've done in the past. You know, Roadrunner has been my home for, uh, you know, since 96. And, uh, or Roadrunner of the United States as well. So we'll really see what happens, you know what I mean? For us, it's not about where to go for the money or any of that right now. I think it's where do we go for the passion? You know, uh, I would think that Roadrunner United States would, would uh, well, they're going to be here tonight. Let's just say that, you know. But we're, we're all remaining on good terms, so that's a good thing. And we're just moving forward, you know. And I've heard that uh, you, has, or you guys already have a bunch of songs written for the next album. Uh, what can people expect? And you have any... T I mean, I, last time we spoke, you said maybe at the end of the year you're going to enter the studio. Is that still standing? Or, or well, what's the status? They played me three songs. And um, two of them there's maybe bits of. You know, until you find the sound, you don't really, you don't really go for it. But the other night in uh, Texas at South by Southwest, they, they jammed me one that they had recorded that I think is absolutely astounding. Um, reminiscent of our first three records, but with a whole nother take on Devil Driver. What we do is we try to make every record different, you know, without going too much outside of ourselves so people can, we can remain who we are, really. And I think they, they touched on a really cool sound uh, with this one tune that I heard. We all started writing lyrics to it and everything right away, and we kind of got a little chorus for it already that, you know, I think is amazing. So we'll see what happens, you know. It's going to be a very critical record for us. And um, we've always taken time writing. Like if we give, put out a record every two years because we had the music, it's demoed, we're ready to go in. This one, I want to make sure that we're ready. And I think the rest of the band does too. 
And last time we spoke, you were about to go on tour for the first time in many, many years with your brother from a cold chamber. How was that experience? That was killer to experience that. And yeah, them clean off drugs. And that was great. We did off shows with Manson and played every day in front of 50, 60,000 people. Um, just absolutely incredible. You know, AJ, the promoter, is a great friend of mine, not just a promoter, he's a family friend. And uh, for him to have us over there to do that for the Australian fans was absolutely incredible. And it was a good time. We're going to go do South America together too. Uh, four days and or four shows in like seven days in September. As of now, that's that's all the Cold Chamber stuff on the books for now. You know. Hey, have a new band or a new project with Mark Morton from La Mogad. And I want to ask you, how did that come about? Because I know you've known each other for a long time, but who called who and who said, "Hey, let's do a project together"? Well, I mean, it's not new because it's it's literally the songs are almost four years old, three or four years old. We we just started jamming together. Um, Mark was home, I was home, Mark started sending me stuff, and I started putting my vocals on it. And uh, before you know it, we had kind of a sound that we had. And, uh, you know, I didn't even know he was going to put them out the other day. He <laughs> called me, he called me out of nowhere. Mark's the boss of this thing, which is killer. I, I do enough press and I do enough stuff, you know, I'm going to let Mark determine what he wants to do with Born of the Storm, when he wants to put other songs out, because we got about at least 11 to 12 songs, and another maybe six or seven that I haven't done anything on yet, you know. But he's in a full album cycle with Lamb of God, and he doesn't want to disturb that. And I'm on a, you know, I'm finishing an album cycle right now, you know, with Devil Driver, so, uh, you know, we don't really have time. But I just saw him the other night. We went to his house and hung out and had a barbecue, and, you know, he's got a great family, a great, great place, killer jam room. So we'll see what happens with that in the future. You know, look, when I'm home, I like to do music. You know, I got hit up last night on, on Twitter from this cat, uh, Excision, a big dubstep cat, saying, like, let's do a song. It's like, I don't discriminate. I'll do it. I love it. I love everything from country to punk rock to, to whatever. And since I got kids, you know, 13, 17, and that are at home, uh, I hear all of that stuff, you know what I mean, coming out of their rooms. So I like to work, and we'll see what happens, you know. And let me ask you before we get out of here, uh, what are your rituals before you go on stage? I know you're headlining tonight. Is there any, like, certain... You know, process that you go to get like in the zone. I like. I like to get a little alone time if I can do. Otherwise, no, no big deal. No, no chanting. No, you know. I'd like to think the spirits will join us on stage. You don't need to get them in the room here, and they might flow into somebody else they they don't know. But that's really it, man. I'm really the kind of guy who can sit in the back lounge. I mean, you guys have known, you know, with you guys and hang out and then walk right up to the stage, you know, so. And uh, what are the plans for Devil Driver for the rest of the year? Any, you know, European festivals, anything yeah. that we can excite people about right now? Yeah, we have the hugest European festival run of our career. All main stages everywhere. It's going to be incredible. Um, June and July. And at, right after this, we go home for like eight, eight or ten days, something, eight or yeah, probably 10 days, and then we go over to, uh, to Australia. And that's going to be a killer package. Right now, Darkest Hour is, is with us, but there's going to be someone else put on that, that as soon as you guys find that out, you're going to freak out. Like, I'm like, really excited. So, Hell yeah, Des, man. I want to thank you for always opening the doors to Hornsop Rocks. No problem. And for always bringing the mayhem to New York City. I know this is a place that always excites whoever comes here. And you've been, you've been playing New York for a long time. Yeah, I love this <laughs> I love this town. Actually, we were walking back from, uh, my, my favorite thing is like go to little diners, you know. We just went and had eggs at a little diner, eggs and coffee. Like, I love it. And uh, I just said, you know, I'd like to make a record in this town. I, I think it'd be really cool, man, to stay, to stay in New York City and to make a record would be, I mean, if we can get anything done. <laughs> That's, that, that'd have to be the problem right there. Maybe we just do it when it's vocals, because I'll go in and cut vocals and then go out at night. But I do like this town. and It showed, showed me some love over the years, for sure. And uh, it's much like Los Angeles. If you, you know, if you get in, and you're good. If you don't, it's no good. You know what I mean? And I feel like uh, this town showed me a lot of love. So I think New Yorkers, you know, they're, they're a great breed. Right on, man. Have a great show. And now, of course, the best of luck when you talk to Bubble, send them the love from everybody. Everybody watching right now is obviously pulling for him because, you know, those are our brothers in metal, and yeah, that's man. what matters. I mean, it was really rough, man. It was really rough for him. I mean, he came back and just, you know, wasn't feeling well, and his best friend, uh, Chris Towning, said, dude, you don't look well. I'm going to take you to the hospital, and he was near death. Uh, apparently, when his mom flew in to visit him, he was, uh, you know, the doctor said he may not make it. So that's just... Uh, incredible. It shows you how short life is and you just have to extend love his way and 
We hope everything for the best, man. We hope he rejoins us. Thank you, Des. And uh, yeah, we're gonna sign off, but we're here at the Metal Alliance number two.